welcome to another tutorial in T-Systems AnyNote video series. We invite you to sit back, relax and watch as we take you through the steps on how you can analyze zip signaling flows with the AnyNote Trace Analyzer in order to troubleshoot issues quickly and effectively when using AnyNote within your VoIP infrastructure. The main advantage to using the Trace Analyzer over conventional developer tools is that it is one single tool that can be and is used by everyone, from on-site administrators all the way up to the core developers of any node here at TS Systems. You do not need to install additional software like Wireshark. You can avoid the time-consuming search for tools suitable for debugging SIP sessions. We have placed a special emphasis on ease of use of our Trace Analyzer tool. The Trace Analyzer was developed by T-Systems especially for AnyNode. This means you easily get the data analyzed and presented that is relevant for you. In case of VoIP network issues, the communication between any node and the remote endpoints are locked into a binary file, called the trace file, upon enabling the any node trace function. This file is then analyzed using the trace analyzer tool. We will show it to you momentarily. You activate the trace logging in the menu on the main interface page, simply titled Tracing. It is of particular importance to start the trace at the right time. Timing is everything. The beginning of all relevant calls should be included in the trace. We have additional settings available under Flex. If Ignore High Volume Messages is enabled, RTP media data, which takes up a lot of space, will not be recorded, so that the trace file is kept to a more manageable size. We recommend that this function should only be used when the problem is suspected of being in the SIP signaling and not in the audio stream. When you enable Ignore Payload, no user data is recorded. Only the header and very limited information, which is primarily of interest to developers, is stored in the trace. After the zip session that you wish to analyze has ended, you stop the trace by clicking Deactivate. Then you download the trace file from the server where any node is installed by using the download button to save the trace to your desired location. In order to analyze any node trace files, T-Systems provides the trace analyzer as part of the standard AnyNode installation. If you are working via remote access, the trace analyzer must be downloaded separately and installed from the AnyNode server to the workstation. Please note that you should download and install the Trace Analyzer from the AnyNode computer again whenever AnyNode is updated to ensure that you are able to use all new features when you are working remotely. Opening the Trace file can be done in various ways. If we want to open the trace file, including all the data, we simply select Open. If the trace file is too large to open easily, we can open the trace using a filter. A general filter removes disk-based intensive RTP media. If you want only failed calls to be displayed, you can use the filter All Failed Sessions. The Trace Analyzer can display individual calls while data is still uploading. The upload process can be monitored by viewing the progress bar. The user interface of the Trace Analyzer is easy and intuitive. 
the traces opened with the individual call displayed under sessions. The result field indicates whether the call was successful or why it failed. The inbound node indicates from which instance of any node the incoming call was processed. It depends on the configuration which node is chosen. Route indicates which route the incoming call is used. If the name of your choice has been chosen logically at the nodes and routes in the configuration, the signal path can be more easily understood at this point. The AnyNode zip destination endpoint of the outgoing call is displayed in node outbound. The following numbers always occur before or after any manipulation. Caller inbound is the number of the incoming call. Called inbound is the destination number of the incoming call. Caller outbound is the number of the outgoing call. Called outbound is the destination number of the outgoing call. Parallel calls shows the number of parallel calls. If any node hasn't established a parallel call, this field is empty. Registration indicates whether the corresponding endpoint involved in the call was registered at the any node. Terminated by shows which site cancelled or disconnected the call. At the end, the media codecs that were used are shown, from the vantage points of both the incoming and outgoing nodes. As you can easily see here, transcoding from a law to mu law was performed. Since it is quite possible that the machine on which any node is installed is running in a different time zone from the machine hosting the trace analyzer where you are examining the trace, you have the option to configure which time zone is displayed. You can select a session with a simple double click and you will automatically be in a detailed view. The graphic realization of the flow of the zip communication, the so-called zip flow, opens by default. Here you can see which zip messages have flowed during the call. In detailed mode, all other information such as RTP packet information and screens are selectable. We will show this in more detail later. Another subdivision for incoming and outgoing calls and incoming and outgoing data is possible and is extremely helpful in analysis. Numbers can be copied by using the right mouse button in the clipboard as needed. Individual numbers can be found quickly by the filter function with a substring search. In ZipFlow, the two sides of the communication which any node connects are always shown. In a default display of a call, the any node is always in the middle and the communication begins with an incoming invite here on the top left. Longer periods with no new zip messages are shown with dashed lines. If you click on zip message, the content of the message will be displayed completely at the bottom. A double click on the zip message leads to the messages overview. Here all zip messages are fully displayed. The right mouse button allows you to copy desired areas such as the entire zip message, the line, the number or everything to the clipboard and then paste it into emails as an example. In addition to the SIP signaling data, the individual RTP media packets can also be displayed. For a quick check whether the any node has received RTP data from the remote end, we recommend clicking the receive stream. You can also combine the send and receive streams in the display. You can see if and when the received messages were sent back from the other end. Now, let's have a closer look at the individual columns. Direction indicates whether RTP packets are received or transmitted. This is highlighted in addition. 
time shows at which time the RTP data packet has been transmitted. Packet difference indicates the time interval between the individual RTP data packets. If the packet size is set to 20 milliseconds, the value 20 should be displayed in the packet intervals here. Values around 100 milliseconds indicate high jitter. This is a delay of voice data, likely impacting quality. This usually indicates too long signal pass or badly adjusted virtual machines. The second point we recommend not to use snapshots in VMware. Destination is the IP address to which the RTP data packet has been sent or was received. SSRC means the identifier of the data source which is indicated in the header. The sequence number is increased for each additional RTP data packet. Using the sequence number, packet loss can be easily recognized due to the packet sequence numbering. The starting point can be determined randomly. This depends on the system. The timestamp indicates the point in time of the first octet, say a unit of digital information of RTP data packets. The timing is based on a linear and continuous cycle. This allows the recognition of runtime differences, also known as jitter. Here the starting value is a random value as well. The field payload describes the format of the transported RTP content. This field shows the length of each RTP data packet in bytes. As an example, a typical RTP packet where G711 was used as the codec has a payload of 160 bytes, which corresponds to 20 milliseconds of audio data. The field CPU load shows the processor load in terms of a percentage. The column marker generally indicates if the marker bit is set. In the display streams, the internal processes can be followed. Here you can see why and how transactions are processed by any node. This display is intended for the technical support engineers and the developers at TE Systems. But with a little practice, experienced technicians can quickly draw conclusions from the messages recorded. Let's have a closer look at what you can do. We have special filter functions, which we access by double-clicking on the session or if both views are set to stream. The red exclamation mark highlights all the streams where any node has detected problems. The blue items contain links and when you click on them, you come to another associated stream. The arrow keys allow us to go one step back. By clicking the right mouse button, it is possible to put a colored flag as a marker to find the stream later quickly. In the display named System, you will get a quick overview of the configuration of any node. These include various global settings, nodes and routes and licenses and certificates installed. For example, the setting of the used nodes can be checked here. Options is under the File tab. Here settings can be set as the default views that will appear at the start of the trace analyzer. The AnyNode administrator may adjust the views and the behavior of the trace. 
also a marker in zip messages can be set if they exceed a user-defined time interval. This value is shown with dashed lines in the zip view. The default value is 10 seconds. If you can't resolve your issue by reviewing the trace analyzer, please contact our technical support and we will be happy to help you. Please describe your issue in as much detail as you can and send in your description along with the trace. We recommend that you use our FTP server for larger trace files, such as those over 50 MB. The name of the trace file should contain the ticket number that you received from our technical support when you first emailed your support request to us. This enables us to identify your file quickly. If there is more than one trace file, please pack them in an ordinary archive, such as a zip file. The file name of the archive should also include the ticket number. We have reached the end of our video tutorial. Thanks for watching.